Um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make this uh, personalized bracelet. Um, it's got the name Phoebe written on here but obviously you can put any name you want on the bracelet. Um, and this one's got a, a Celtic knot pattern at the back there. And we're going to do this with uh, Fluid Designer for 3D printing. So if you start Fluid Designer for 3D printing, up, um, we're going to use uh, the bracelet, the standard 65mm uh, UK bracelet. Um, and we're also going to use a couple of other objects. Now if I just cl click group library here, this will just refresh my list. That's all it does. Um, so I'm going to use a Harrington font to spell out the name Phoebe. And um, I'm also going to, uh, if I go back to bracelets, um, I'm also going to use a Celtic knot pattern um, jewellery object, which you can purchase from us. Um, so it's this object here if I just drag and drop that onto the workspace um, I'm going to append this object as well um, onto my workspace I mean I could just use this one as it is um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it uh, by appending it um, so if I just go to uh, file and new so um, this object here the default uh, bracelet uh, is available free of charge when you download fluid designer for 3d printing um, and the default size bracelet is 65 millimeters. Um, you could set the bracelet at different inner diameters here, um, but I'm going to stick to the 65 millimeter one. Um, so I'll just uh, shut that panel down a little bit again. Um, so I'm going to stick with the default one. Uh, I'll just switch on screencast key so any key presses I make should be displayed down here. And um, I'm just going to switch off the grid floor so that's not in, in view there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this cross section, the bevel object, it's one millimeter at the moment by 10. Now this is a, a smart object um, so I can just change it over here in the properties panel and I'm just going to change that so that it's got a cross section essentially of one by one. So that's one millimeter by one millimeter. And then if I just go and uh, view that from the front, um, I'm going to duplicate this object. So if I go to Tools, Object Tools and Duplicate and just press the Enter key on the keyboard. And then I'll just uh, move the duplicate up there. And with the duplicate highlighted, if I go to Tools, Object Tools and Duplicate again and just move the duplicate down. So we've now got three objects here. And if we just look over here, we've got three of them named. We've got 65mm 001, which is the top one, 65mm 002, which is the bottom, and this is the original one. Now what I'm going to do is to join all three together, and I'm going to highlight 02 first, highlight the top one second, and uh, join them. And then I'm going to join them to the original one, the one that's in the centre effectively, last and it's quite important that you do that because you want the center of origin of the object to be at the cursor there okay so it is quite important how you join those up um, so if I just go to view and front view now and uh, home um, so there's the, uh, the three rings um, what I'm going to do now is append the Celtic knot pattern and uh, it's in the bracelets folder so um, I just go to file and append and I'm already in the bracelets folder here and I'm going to use the Celtic knot bracelet four leaf pattern we could use others but I'm going to stick to that and so it's Celtic knot bracelet four leaf 65 millimeter which is our kind of default size um, so there's the uh, um, pattern now at the moment um, if we look over here, we've got this Celtic uh, knot pattern, but it's actually being wrapped around this object here, this inner diameter. Can't see it on the screen at the moment because um, our uh, original object's in the way, so I've just uh, switched the view off for that. So uh, this Celtic knot pattern is actually, by default, wrapped around this inner diameter, which is set to be 65 millimeters. Um, I want to switch that off. I want to delete that in, uh, in effect. So I'm going to do, um, with it highlighted, I'm going to press X on the keyboard and delete it. And notice that the, um, 
Celtic knot pattern now is not circular anymore. So what I need to do is I'm going to wrap it around this default inner diameter, our three rings here. And um, I can do that by going to uh, modifiers and um, setting the bracelet size for the Celtic knot. It was actually set at 65 millimeters, but it was a different object. I'm going to just uh, wrap it around my bracelet object here. So it's my default inner diameter when I wrap it around there. Now, you know, it's just put it back in the same position, but it is wrapped around a different object, which is quite important uh, for what I'm going to do later. Um, now, the count on this at the moment is 14. Um, I'm going to reduce that down to, I don't know, about 6, I think. Um, now, you could change the pattern here by changing the offset. Um, I'm going to stick with the default offset of uh, 0 0.9. Um, now, as you can see, the pattern at the moment is a little bit too small for um, this setting that I've got here. Um, but um, before I adjust it, I'm actually going to uh, bring in the name Phoebe first of all. Uh, and I'll set the Phoebe text first before I adjust this pattern here. So if I go to view and uh, if I change to top view now, um, I showed you already that uh, the font that I'm going to use is, is the Harrington font. So it's Patterns Alphabet Harrington font. So uh, the way we write Phoebe is we go to File and Append. And uh, we just go up through the menu system in here until you get to the Groups folder. And then you should be able to see Harrington fonts. And I'm going to use capitals, so P is the first letter I want. So it's Harrington font P, append it from the library. Um, and uh, go back to Harrington fonts with append again. So I want a H now. Um, so object H, append that from the library. And you must click on it to select it. And I just move it one um, millimeter to the right there. Sorry, one centimeter to the right. So file and append. P, H, uh, I want to know now. So I'm just spelling out the name Phoebe. Um, just move it to the right. So I want an E now. And a B. Um, so there's uh, Phoebe almost anyway. Um, so I just put that there. Um, now I need another E on the end. So uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools, Object Tools and duplicate that E and press the Enter key and just place it there. Now um, I'm could, I could zoom in and change the uh, position of these. I could move that up a little bit for example if you want to play around getting the heights all lined up. Um, I'm not going to worry too much in this instance. What I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and highlight all the parts of uh, Phoebe and just go to Tools, Object, Tools and join them all into one object. Um, now at this stage it's usually a good idea to recenter this object. Well first of all if I go to Tools, Object, Tools and set the origin to the geometry of the object and uh, the cursor moves here now. And then if I go to cursor and snap selection to cursor, it will snap it back to the center of the screen. So I've just, I'm just positioning it in the center of the screen effectively there. Um, now I want to wrap this around my bracelet. So the first thing I want to do is to rotate it upwards. So I can do R on the keyboard for rotate. I want to limit my rotation to the x-axis 90 degrees. So x-axis is the... Um, red arrow there so I've just rotated it 90 degrees about the x-axis. Now I'm going to wrap it around this uh, object here, around this um, curve, our um, default uh, inner diameter object and what I know is that when I do that it will turn the text back to front. So what I also want to do is I want to rotate this um, about the z-axis, I want to rotate it around so that it's back to front here and I can do that by typing 180 degrees there as the uh, Z value. So I rotated it 90 degrees about X. 
and 180 degrees about Z. And uh, I say I do that because when I wrap this around the curve, um, it will turn it back to front. So it looks like Phoebe spelt backwards, but it won't be in a second. So what we want to do now is to go to modifiers and we're going to add a curve modifier to Phoebe and essentially what I'm going to do is to wrap it around the bracelet itself. So the object I want to wrap it around is the uh, default inner diameter object which is the same object that uh, I wrapped the Celtic knot pattern around. Um, so it's the default inner diameter and uh, it's actually just these three rings, the bracelet. Now as you can see the positioning of this is not quite right um, so I want to move it around the bracelet and uh, in order to do that what I need to do is to press the tab key to go into edit mode and press the A key on the keyboard and that will highlight everything and I think if I move it across here or across the x-axis that's effectively rotating it around and um, obviously what I want to try and do is to try and get it so that it's uh, evenly spaced I think I just need to move it a little bit more so I'm looking for a kind of even amount on there and there um, and that's yeah I've probably gone just a little bit too far so let me just try pulling it back a little bit need to zoom in and I think here um, otherwise, no, that's probably going to move it a bit too much that it's just uh, yeah okay that has moved it a bit too much okay so an alternative way of doing this is I could change this value up here this will do it more slowly in the transform panel and uh, I'm just now need to just keep switching in and out of edit mode as I adjust this value here and I'm just trying to get that straight up now. So I'm just, instead of dragging it along the x-axis, I'm just moving it more finely. And there you are, I've got it now sort of even at the top and the bottom. So that's edit mode. So instead of dragging it here, I changed the value up here and fine-tuned it. Okay, so I've got the Phoebe in the right sort of uh, location there. Um, I need to go back, um, well no actually I'll, uh, I'll stick with Phoebe at the moment, so if I view from the right, okay looking at it now I need to sort of move it upwards, um, now if I try dragging that it's going to move it in uh, centimetres so I don't want to do that, so um, I could just switch off the snap here and just zoom in and uh, I just want to kind of centre it a little bit more about the top and bottom of my um, bracelet there. Okay, now um, I could scale this up, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my bracelet and go to view and front view and press home. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to view it from the right again so I can see Phoebe. Now, if I go into uh, edit mode now, whoops, got the wrong thing highlighted I need to highlight the actual bracelet if I go into edit mode um, all the control points were highlighted there so if I just press the A key on the keyboard to deselect the control points and uh, if I just press B on the keyboard for box or border select I'm just going to highlight the top part of this bracelet and if I zoom in um, once I get the millimeters there what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that down one ah, let me just undo that. I haven't got my snap on. Let me switch the snap on so that I know exactly the amount that I'm moving it. One. I'm moving that down two millimetres. So I want to do the same to the bottom effectively. So A to deselect the control points. B for border or box select to highlight the bottom. And I'm just going to move this one up now. One. Two millimetres. As Whoops, I've gone three millimetres. Um, so I'll move it up two millimeters at the bottom there. So that's just uh, position Phoebe a lot better now. So it's uh, actually touching. I know it's overlapping there, um, but I'm actually going to leave that as it is. Um, so I now need to go around the other side here, and I need to scale up 
scale up in size my Celtic knot pattern so that it fits the top and the bottom. So if I view this from the left hand side and just zoom in, if I press S on the keyboard for scale and then pull the mouse away, I can scale up my Celtic knot pattern and uh, click. Now, this is a parametric smart object. It's very important when you actually scale in Fluid Designer that you always do Control A and apply the scale and watch the thickness of my Celtic knot reset. It's reset to the original thickness now. If you don't do that, you won't know what the thickness of that object is. Okay. Um, and where is the thickness? Well, if we go over here into the um, curve data information in the properties panel, this has got a cross section of one millimeter rounded. If I change that to one by one to make it a kind of square cross section like the top and bottom of the bracelet, um, it will be the same thickness now. Uh, and if I also click on um, Phoebe, you can see that Phoebe is one by two at the moment. Well, if I change that to one by one as well, I've set all my thicknesses to be the same now. And uh, so if we go to view and top view, you can see that Phoebe fits nicely within the uh, bracelet there, and so does the uh, Celtic knot pattern. Um, now, the one other thing that I need to do is to check the uh, location of the Celtic knot pattern. It's actually closer here to the green line than it is on the other side. So I need to adjust the position of that in the same way that I did with Phoebe. Um, so I can do that by uh, pressing the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode. Now notice it's a bit weird. This I actually have to pull it down the x-axis. Um, I'm not sure quite which way I'm going to drag it. I'll, I'll try dragging it that way. Yeah, that seems to be the right direction. Um, so drag it a little bit more. So what I'm looking for is the same sort of spacing on that side as I've got on the other side. So if I just go to top view, yeah, it looks that looks pretty good. I've actually managed to do that quite well. If you want to be really precise, you can always go into edit mode and you can change the value up here in the transform panel rather than in millimeter units here. Um, I don't need to do that, I don't think. I mean, that looks, that looks okay like that. All right, now, um, what else do I want to do here? Well, I'm going to remove this middle bar, but before I remove it, um, what I'm going to do, um, if you go back to the original design, you can see that it goes up and down here, both at uh, the, the um, Celtic knot pattern and Phoebe. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, this is the reason that we joined all three um, bars of the bracelet together and why we join them to the center one last. If I highlight the um, bracelet itself, the three rings, and go into edit mode, what you can see is that there are a number of control points around here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that control point there, the one that's in the center, and I'm also going to highlight the one that's in the center on the other side. And uh, if over here now in the transform panel, if I change this value for mean radius, and I'm clicking on the end and changing it quite slowly there, if I actually drag it with the mouse, you can see that I can pull up the text Phoebe and the, the um, Celtic knot pattern as well. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to type a mean radius of 2 in there. And what you get is this proportional editing effect that it moves more in the center because these are the two control points that are highlighted. It moves more here than further down. So you get this nice pattern occurring. Um, now, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to delete. Uh, now, notice as I actually do that, that the thickness here at this point where the control point is has changed very slightly. Um, the object is a little bit thicker here than it is round at this point. So that is something to note. Um, now, as long as I'm happy with that, I'm happy with the height, 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to change the Phoebe and the Celtic knot pattern into um, meshes tools object tools convert it to a mesh so that locks that into the position and the size now and tools object tools and convert that to a mesh and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to modify my uh, bracelet a little bit here so if I go to view and uh, front view and if I press the tab key to go into edit mode just press A on the keyboard to deselect any control points and uh, I'm just going to draw around the center of the um, three rings there just to highlight the center part of this bracelet and if I press X on the keyboard to delete the center part of it and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that control point there by Phoebe and if I view from the right hand side now looking at Phoebe I'm just going to pull up, um, probably need to go in a little bit until I get the millimeter grid there. I'm going to just pull that up so that the bracelet is there. Now I've pulled it up to 15 millimeters. So uh, if I click on the next control point there, that's actually the one that's at the back. So if I just view it from the right again, that's the one. Oops. Sorry, view it from the right, not from the back. Um, so I want to move that control point. So I'm moving the uh, bracelet at the back up to the same point, to 15 millimeters. And then I want to do the same with the one at the bottom. So I'm going to move it down to minus uh, 15. We want to, to try and keep it symmetrical. And then the second one as well, move that down. Yep. So what I've done is I've just moved that control point there at the bottom of Phoebe, the one at the top, and the one here, and the one at the bottom in the centre. And I've moved them all to 15mm so they're all the same. So once you've done that you can come out of edit mode. And so that just changes the uh, bracelet from being a, a very boring sort of round um, to that new shape there now. And uh, what we can then do is go to Tools, Object, Tools and convert those two rings to a mesh. And then if you just hold down the Shift key, highlight the Celtic knot pattern, highlight the name Phoebe, Tools, Object, Tools and... Uh, sorry, Tools, Object, Tools, not convert to a mesh. I want to join them, Tools, Object, Tools and join them together. I've now got... Uh, one object here, a bracelet with a Celtic knot pattern and personalised with the name Phoebe. And so at this stage you can export it. I usually use the Wavefront object. Um, I saved it with the name personalised Phoebe, 65mm Celtic knot bracelet. Um, I did that earlier obviously. Um, and what you should always do then is go to Netfab Basic, import it into Netfab Basic, just run the repair procedure in NetFab, as we've shown you many times before, um, and then you will have your finished bracelet. Um, and in this instance, I uploaded uploaded that to Shapeways, um, and it will it will print in uh, steel and plastic um, and gold and silver. Although you know, if you do zoom in, you'll see that the quality is not probably not quite good enough to be doing in silver or gold. Um, we can improve the quality, but not going to do that in this instance because it will increase the file size way above what Shapeways are prepared to print at the moment anyway. Alright, so good luck.